All right, guys, how are we doing? Welcome to what I hope is going to be some regular coaching streams, four o'clock UK time on uh, on a Monday. Here we are, WCOOP main event day two. Matt Burns in the Twitch chat says, whoop, whoop, looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this as well. Um, I haven't been on Twitch for a while, so I am Jot, how's it going? Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm excited to to stream. I'm streaming on Twitch and YouTube, so wherever you're watching, welcome to uh, to the stream. We are gonna try some different things today. Uh, it's gonna be quite an interactive session. We're gonna see how long we can go. But I just realised that day two of the main event is at five thirty-five, so we might not be might not do a full hour um, because gonna have to. Uh, go and make dinner and have dinner before day two starts. Uh, unfortunately, I'm only coming back to day two with 10 big blinds, so it's really, um, you know, it could all be over in one hand. But you never know, you never know. I played a live tournament recently, Mystery Bounty, at, um, uh, on the Grosvenor tour and came back, well, I went through the blinds and came, and then suddenly had like four bigs and um, ended up playing for another few hours. So you never know, you should never, never give up. Um, okay, so the plan for today is I've got a series of final table preflop spots to look at. Um, if you can hear me, guys, can you just say yes into the chat, whether you're watching on Twitch or YouTube? I'm going to keep an eye, eye on that. Yep. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so Nilda, how's it going? Um, all right, so here's the first spot then. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this okay. This is a scoop tournament with 600k for first. And uh, how many players are left here? Seven players are left. Now, I really, I can't recommend whole cards up reviews more than I'm about to like they are just so so good so so useful for finding finding um spots to to run and to look at so what I've done here um there are three players currently involved in this hand um I have hidden the whole cards of the under the gun player and the cutoff so as not to um affect your decision making in this uh in this spot so we're going to try and do as I said we're going to try and make this interactive now I've never done this before uh, I do it with my group, um, so we have um, we have an academy and we have a train and play like the pros program. So we do this within uh, within those programs, but I've never done it live on Twitch, so I've no idea how it's going to work today. So bear with me; we might have some technical difficulties. Who knows? Um, but we are gonna we're gonna do our best. So let's have a look. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link into the chat. Let's hopefully see that it works. And all you need to do is to click on that link and tell me what you would do with jacks in this spot. So you can see under the gun of 37 bigs goes for a raise. Maybe it's 35. Um, hey Moral, thanks for that. I appreciate that. Don't play live really. So uh, I appreciate your uh, you commenting. That's uh, really helpful. Um, and then the cutoff jams for, what is it, about 19 big blinds, 19 or 20 big blinds, and it folds to you with pocket jacks. So all you need to do is to uh, go to that link and just choose whether you would fold or uh, or rejam. And if this works well, we might even get something that, let's have a look, see if this actually works. So currently we've got votes for rejam, um, but we've actually only had one vote. So guys, it is going to be interactive. You've got to you have got to, uh, you've got to, got to interact. There we go. We've got a couple of votes. So a couple of votes. All right. So this is, uh, this is looking good. And uh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Give us a few seconds just to see, just to see what happens. Uh, shout out to Brazilian Donks, first time chat. Um, he said call and rejam. All right. Well, you can't do both. Uh, oh, I suppose you could. I suppose you could call with the intention of uh, rejamming. Ah, YouTube, you didn't get the link. Let me post the link to you guys as well. Um, okay, so guys, I can see that you are posting your 
answers into the chat. I don't want it in the chat. There is a link in the chat. It's a Menti link. And you've got to click that and tell me what you want to do in this uh, in this spot, whether it's uh, whether it's call, uh, sorry, fold or regen. Now, really interestingly, we've got a whole whole balance here. We've got ten votes now, and five five all. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. Okay, well, there's some more coming in now. This is excellent, guys. Shout out to you guys for playing along at home, and this is this is really really good. So, thirteen votes. Rejam, oh, 14. Rejam has it right now. Okay. Uh, Rolston, you should have the link now. Um, oh, yeah, you, you've you got it. Okay, yeah. So, guys, um, Revs has said 100% Rejam. 100% Rejam. All right. We right. Let's, uh, let's have a look. I don't really know how, how much longer to, 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 to take this. Uh, to take this. We had loads of followers. Well, we should probably keep an eye on this, but um, I'm having I'm having the most fun looking at this uh, looking at this graph go up and down. Um, having never never done it before uh, live on Twitch and YouTube. Um, all right, uh, Patrick says thirty five big blinds can't hurt much. Um, well, I mean it's quite a big part of your stack, isn't it? It's almost half your stack. Let's take a look at the solution and uh, and see what is what is happening now. Hopefully. All right, we might have to get rid of the results. So basically, rejam one, didn't it? Rejam, rejam one. Um, where are we? We are going to this one here, and under the gun opens. So we're going to start off here. Under the gun is opening a really, really tight, strong range, twelve point six percent. Okay, twelve point six percent. So let's just have a look at these bubble factors. Under the guns bubble factors against everybody is fairly high, apart from the players who are shorter than than them. Um, but you can see like under the gun against the big blind, 14.5%, 14.1 against the small blind. The player who shoved was the cutoff uh, was 19%. So there is premium against under the gun is 7.8%, but they're the one jamming, they're the one that's gonna be applying pressure. Um, and then it folds to the, the big blind. So big blinds risk premium against under the gun, 5.8%, not insignificant, but certainly not huge. And against the cutoff is quite small, 2.7%. And you're always going to find this. If it's big stack versus big stack, you're going to see really high risk premiums. If uh, it's like um, short stack versus short stack, you're going to see uh, you know smaller risk premiums. And if you're playing against a player who's got a shorter stack than you, then that is going to be uh, the smallest or the lowest risk premium. So if you've never heard this term before, risk premium is basically the extra equity that you need in order to um, to continue in the hand. So, not only, like if it's a, uh, facing an all-in, then you can just add that risk premium to the equity that you need. Um, if it's not all-in, if it's like a big blind defense spot, then you uh, need to factor in uh, equity realization as well. Like how how well is your hand? Um, or I guess your range, but your hands within that range, going to realize uh, equity in this situation. So if you're out of position, you're going to do a worse job of realizing um, equity. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's move on through. So key thing is though that you might not have, have realized is that under the guns opening a really tight range. Now the cutoff, if they're going to jam through that range, um, where are we? Um, let's go through here. If they're going to jam through this range, their strategy is going to be very, very strong, very tight. Their range, uh, jamming range is very tight, as you can see. So we've got under the gun opening a really tight range. Because of that, the cutoff, who's jamming 20 bigs through an under the, tight under the gun range, is going to be tight themselves. And actually, you know, jacks plus, king queen suited, ace king off, and then some suited wheel aces um, as well. So if you're looking at ace five and ace four and thinking, why are they shoving those hands? Well, um, it's all going to come down to just a little bit of logic. If you shove ace five suited, you can get better hands to fold. So I'm just going to show you this. Uh, this is under the gun, right? So under the gun can't call ace queen suited, ace queen off, ace jack, ace ten, ace nine. So if you shove ace five suited, you're getting all these better ace six hands to fold. Also, you're getting these pairs to fold, which is just massive, right? It's really, really significant. So um, that's why ace four and ace five can shove. They also block the calling range. So if we go back to the calling range, aces, ace, king, ace, five suited blocks, aces, and ace, king. And um, 
is uh, going to do better against these pairs than any of these lower pairs will. So you can see that like tens, nines, eights, really not doing too well in this uh, in this spot. And I think this is a really common misconception that you can shove these pairs. Like I've seen players shove tens, nines, and eights in this situation, and you can see that they're really yeah they're not they're not shoves. Um, they can be called occasionally, but mainly they just want to go ahead and uh, and fold. If you've got any questions as we go through this, by all means, just fire them into the chat. There will be some interaction as you've seen already. Um, but yeah, so this is the cutoffs, cutoffs range uh, for shoving. And then we get to the big blind and this is their strategy. Now, I guess you could set the sim up to allow for calls and jams, but I think it's really unlikely that the big blind gets to call and then fold if the under the gun player shoves. There's just so many, so much in the pot already and they're not covered. So, um, but yeah, you can see Shadow says, so I was correct, Jack Jack is a fold. Uh, Jax is a fold, yeah, Jax is a fold in this spot. I don't know who it was, Revs. Rev64 says 100% rejam. And as you can see, um, it isn't. Jax is, uh, Jax is losing money in this, uh, in this spot. So of course, like if you think, oh, my opponents are definitely shoving tens and nines and eights, and therefore, you know, Jax is, is going to be fine in this spot, then fair enough. Um, Shadow says, in this ICM situation. Exactly, in this ICM situation. So let's go back to here, I think. Um, so, yeah, so this is the, this is the spot. It's actually a fold in this, uh, in this scenario. Let's have a look. Kent touched this. Great, great screen name on YouTube. says... Does the strategy change if, say, playing a $2 final table when the players don't ne necessarily know what ICM is? Of course it's going to change. How much it changes, um, I think you can comfortably assume, but, you know, um, as, as the saying goes, assuming it makes an ass out of you and me, right? So you can assume that maybe the cutoff's not shoving ace-4 and ace-5 suited. And maybe they're shoving the 9s and 10s instead, in which case jacks might suddenly you know be i uh, look a, a lot better we got to think as well like i mentioned before about ace four and ace five suited rejamming and uh sorry three bet jamming and getting better ace x hands to fold if you jam jacks here like i wonder if better hands fold what about queens what about kings mm, we'll see in a moment because we're going to get to that in a uh in the next question but for sure like we start at a point of equilibrium right this is what it supposed to look like in a, in a world where everybody plays perfectly and then we can adjust from there but we shouldn't go straight to like oh we should explore oh, this is definitely definitely getting because of this um you've got to, i think you've got to start from from a um, point of sort of equilibrium first all right let me try and get the next bit sorted so we are going to move to the next slide um that's unfortunate <laughs> Because this screenshot should show uh, this is exactly the same hand. Under the gun ends up having pocket queens, right? And uh, the big blind does shove with pocket jacks. Now, again, I have hidden both of those hands. So I want you to assume, because when you're in this situation, you don't know what your opponents are shoving. So you don't know what the cutoff shoving. I can tell you if you want, but it's like, we know that he's got a range of hands that he wants to shove. We now know the big blind reshoves with jacks, but that's a mistake. In an ideal world, in an equilibrium world, what do you do with pocket queens? I'm going to show you. Um, should be the next. Should be the next question. Um, let's just see if this works. How do I get to the next bit? This is where I've never used this. Next slide. Here we go. So, what do you do with uh, queens facing a four bet? Should be the same link, guys. Should be the same link. I'm going to post it again. Fingers crossed this works. Uh, Crazy Kiss 69 says uh, call. So click on that link and make sure that you are choosing choosing the option. So we're, we're looking at equilibrium world, not the fact that this guy's shoved jacks, right? This is why I've hidden the, hidden the, hidden the cards. In ideal world, where we saw that it was actually queens plus ace king, right? Um, let's just go back to that and just check. In an equilibrium world, yeah, queens plus ace king. What does queens do here? Do you, is it fold or a call? Let's see if this uh, we can get this going again. 
Yes, we can. Look at that. Loads more folds this time. Loads of folds. I'm trying to keep up with the chat as well. Let's have a look. Yanis on, uh, on, in the chat. Make sure you click in the link, Yanis, so you can uh, choose an option. So we've got loads of votes for fold. So folding is definitely coming out on top in this spot. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Shadow had a question. If cutoff has a big bounty, I suppose things change. It's a really interesting question. It's a really interesting question. Like, because we need to obviously quantify how big the bounty is. And on a final table, yes, bounty is going to lead to lower risk premiums. So we looked earlier and there were some risk premiums like 13%, 16%, 15%. On a final table in a bounty tournament, those risk premiums are much lower. And sometimes they're even negative, which means that you can get it in with a hand that ordinarily for raw equity wouldn't be good enough. Um, but it, you know, it really, um, it really depends. All right. Just really, really depends uh, on how big the bounty is, but we're not doing bounty tournaments today. We are focusing on vanilla tournaments, but it's a great question. Um, okay. So yeah, guys, if you're just, if you just joined the stream, we are looking at some final table spots today. We are using Menti to help us out with some, um, uh, some charts like this you can see like you know a bit of interaction you get to see what other people choose and you can see here that uh, everyone's going for fold fold with queens which i think is really really interesting but vicho says bounties are important and lower the price but in, are insignificant as you want to get to the next pay jump so they become less important on final tables okay so i would say that you there's this the idea of like wanting to get to the next pay jump is uh, it's certainly not how the solver works, right? The solver doesn't go, oh, do you know what? I'm going to fold here because I really want to get to the next pay jump. It's literally looking at EV, dollar EV, and working out whether calling or folding is higher EV. And if calling's higher EV than folding, it's going to take the chance and it's going to, it's going to go for it, okay? Um, okay, let's turn this, the menti thing off. Let's bring in back in HRC and see what the strategy should look like. And Queens is a fold, so the two thirds of you who chose fold, congratulations. Um, if you call with Queens here, you're losing $38,000. Um, I can't remember what the buy-in is on this, but that seems like a lot of money. Uh, I might, yeah, I don't know what the tournament, uh, as I said, I don't know, don't know what the buy-in is, but yeah, $38,000 is what, you're, what you would be losing in this, uh, in this spot. Um, hero in this exact hand i think he did fold queens so um if we go back to the situation so jacks is a fold but i just said like oh if he shoves jacks maybe he can get queens to fold well queens does fold um actually let's just go back see if we can find the hrc sim because um yeah it's just a really 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 tight range sometimes you see like i said earlier on if you, you can shove lighter hands to get better hands to fold but there's no, like you're not getting be any better hands to fold when you shove a range of queens plus ace king. Um, apart from queens and ace king, I guess. <laughs> uh, which, you know, fair enough, is uh, is definitely a consideration. Um, all right, I have lost the chat. Let's pull that back up. Let's have a look. Um... I think it, Shadow thinks it's a 1k buy or a 500 at least. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. And da, 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 da. Yankees fan says, raise fold queens to 10 big blinds. I don't know. Under the gun has to fo to raise aces or kings. So uh, yeah, let's go back to the back to the hand in question. So this player opened for a min raise and this player jammed. And then this guy does, does actually uh, rejam for 80 plus bigs. And the action's back on queens and queens has to fold. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So uh, we're going to go to the next question. How are we doing for time? As I said earlier, guys, we've got day two of the main event today and uh, I'm still going to make dinner and eat it before we play. So I don't want to go till five o'clock, but we're doing fine for time. All right. Next one, then I'm going to send you the next link. Tell me what you would like to do here. Now, there are more options here. It's not just call or rejam or call or fold. Uh, we've got um, fold call three bet to five and a half big blinds 
or jam let me send you this link i'm going to post it in the chat of both twitch and youtube so guys click on that link and tell me what you want to do with ace jack suited here so you are comfortably at the bottom of the pack uh what's that six of six 100k for first 22k locked up let's see what the results look like um there's no short stacks there's no really short stacks, so i think that might have an effect on what you want to do in this uh in this spot shout out to vcr 0502 for the follow all right I'm getting some votes come through this is excellent guys I was about to say, no one's chosen Fold yet, but uh, now now somebody has. Give it a few more seconds. What are you going to do in this spot? So it's button versus cutoff. Um, cheers, Ed. I appreciate, appreciate that. I know that uh, you're a big fan of Menti here as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really nice way to sort of show some interaction, get some interaction going and... Um, yeah, you guys can see what other people are thinking uh, of as well. So let's have a look at this then. We've got 18 votes, awesome. Um, two folds, we've got call call and three bet jam are the main ones and then three bet to five and a half gets uh, gets more than, um, more than a fold at least. Um, which is, I think is, is very, very interesting, especially when we see the, uh, the sim. Um, Yanis, Yanis, I'm going to keep saying this. Yanis, you can click that link and you can choose the option that you like. So if you click the link, you can actually choose the option and it will pop up. I'm going to try and get this camera right. Where are we going? No, this way. And it will pop up in this in this graph here. So if you click that link, rather than replying to the comment, you can just click the link and it will take you through to there. That would be amazing. Let's have a look at the sim. There we go. Whoa. Fax05, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, all right, well, now, I mean, now it's just even. Call three bet and three bet jam. I mean, this could be really interesting, especially if there's a mixed strategy, right? Um, okay, so here is the overall strategy. So folding quite a lot. In fact, let's have a look first at the risk premium. So cutoff's got this huge stack, 186 big blinds. What a, what a life. Um, and then the button versus the cutoff, 12.4%. So this is really, really important to, to understand on a final table that this risk premium really comes into its own, fuzzy ferret afternoon, um, really comes into its own. Um, oh, I need to move the graph. Thank you. Appreciate that, Ed. There we go. Right. Um, yeah. Th so this risk premium really comes into its own when you are facing a jam. Yes. Okay. You can like call in position. Um, and you've got to be able to realize the equity and you might face you know, an all in by the river if you're going to play post flop. Um, but um, yeah, I think uh, like the the key key thing is about um, whether or not uh, like when you face a jam. Right. So this is going to affect you like how wide do you want a three bet to induce? So if we look, this is the this is the range that we want to three bet this kind of salmon -y, so many red colors. So basically it's like jacks plus ace king suited. And then we've got some ace jack suited in there, ace queen suited as well. I think these these hands in here are gonna three bet call. I think these suited aces down here are gonna three bet fold. Uh, nines is probably gonna three bet call. Ace and off's gonna three bet fold. King jack off's gonna three bet fold. Ace jack off I think is gonna three bet fold. Where did we get to with the, the graph? So we had everyone, so two people voted fold and then everybody else was a split between call three bet and three bet jam. Um, so yeah, I mean, the there's pretty close between call and three bet jam in terms of uh, EV, um, but it does look like it wants to three bet more frequently. If you do three bet, I do think it's with the intention of getting it in, right? Um, but that relies on something pretty pretty important happening. And that's what the cutoff chooses to do. Now, this is the cutoff's response to our three bet. 
And this is why Ace Jack suited is a fine three bet call because you can see hands like Queen Jack suited, King Jack suited, Jack 10 suited, all the weak air suited aces. There's loads of suited kings in there. There's some pairs in there that we're going to be flipping against. So we are going to be getting it in pretty, pretty nice in this uh, in this spot. Kent touch this says Ace Jack suited must be a three bet call. It is. Cutoff's not going to four bet as a bluff. Um, well, the cutoff's going to jam. So it's like. Two bigs raise, five and a half pigs, three bet. They're just going to jam for 30 bigs, um, the four bet jam. And this is the range that they four bet. Okay. This is the, the range. Um, so Kent Touch is saying because the three bet of 30 big blinds is so strong. But it actually isn't. All right. So will cut off shove ace 10 off or ace five suited? Uh, ace five suited, they should do. As you can see, this is the range we're looking at. I don't know if the chat is maybe a little bit, a little bit behind. Um, because we just went through this, like all of the suited aces um, or the stream. I don't know. The stream is the stream lagging, guys. I don't know. Um, but let's go through it again. The reason why Ace Jack suited is a three bet call is because you've got all these suited aces jamming and you've got King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, Jack 10 suited. You've got pairs. You've got um, you know lots of weaker hands as well. Ace five off even going for a shove. Um, and this is because, you know, we talked about this earlier on, the risk premium, the buttons risk premium against the big stack is 12, 12 ish percent. So that means that they have to, you know, fold, fold a decent, uh, decent amount. So facing a four bet, oops, this is the kind of hands that we can get it in with. So nines is a three bet call. H jack suited is a three bet call. Uh, H jack off looks like there's some folding in there. So it's probably like pretty marginal. Um, yeah. So this is the, yeah, we're going to be three bet calling with this. These hands and then all the other hands you can see in white are the hands we're going to three bet fold. Uh, Yankees fan says, I don't think people four bet enough. I agree. I don't think people are four betting this aggressively. But we start with a point about equilibrium and then we can we can adjust from there. And as players get better at this game, we are going to see more and more players getting closer to, to these. So it's important to, to know what to do. Um, Bibe says, hello, a bit late. Will it be available online as a video? It should be available as a replay on both YouTube and Twitch. Um, let's have a look. Bat Vicho says, uh, that is a very wide range to 4-bet jam with from the cutoff. Uh, I thought calling might make more sense as if cutoff jams, I would have assumed a much tighter range from the cutoff. It's just because they can apply so much pressure, right? They've got a huge stack, monster stack, and they... Um, yeah, they can just apply loads of pressure because your risk premium, even though you're bottom of the pack, this is one of those misconceptions, actually. Let's just address this now. As a short start, as the player six of six, you're, um, you feel like, oh, there's no ICM. There's no ICM here because I am the short, shortest stack. Well, that's just nonsense. This is just a misconception. Um, I don't know where it came from, but um, you can see that there we went through this before but the buttons risk premium against the cutoff 12.4 percent so you can't say there's no icm here right there's definitely some icm so um well a lot of icm let's have a look there's some other comments here on youtube um uh, okay no i think i think we've got everything so yeah this is this is where we are at but yeah this was the the range of hands that the Cutoff just wants to send in, which is kind of nice. All right, here's the next one then. Everyone loves seven deuce off suit. Let me find the next link to send you. One second. And the question here is going to be, what do you want to do with seven deuce off? Do you want to fold? I'm going to post the link in now. Do you want to fold do you want to limp do you want to raise to three and a half bigs or do you want to jam shadow's gone for shove any two if that's the case shadow get onto the link and click jam for me. Oh yeah, you guys can't see this. 
I can see on the other screen, here we go. So no votes for limp, some votes for fold though, lots of votes for raise and one vote for jam. More votes for jam now. I'm gonna give it a few more moments, more votes for jam, all right. Here we go. Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. Artis is saying link. It's like three messages up, Artis. I'm going to post it again just in case you just joined the stream. Um, so you can you can vote on it. Bowie is about to have a rude awakening, I feel like. Uh... <laughs> Bowie, but shout out to you for being here. Um, but I do feel like you might might get a shock. <laughs> uh, right, let's uh, let's get rid of the menti results and have a look at the solution. Um, and I'll explain things as we as we go. Um, okay, so here's a small blind strategy, and as you can see, we're only folding three point one percent of the time. But to make up that three point one percent of hands, seven deuce off is in there as uh, as a fold, and. Um, Three deuce off, six deuce off, seven deuce off, all folding. We've got some jams in here, we've got some limps in here, and we've got a huge amount of raising, all right? So huge amount of raising, once again, let's have a look at this risk premium. Um, big blind versus small blind, 13.9%. So when, let's just have a look. If small blind decides to jam, you can see pretty tight calling range for the big blind. If they choose to raise, the big blind has to start folding, you know, these suit hands down here. Hopefully you can see my mouse. And then quite a lot of off-suit stuff in here. Um, <laughs> Bowie uh, Bowie didn't hit the 3% uh, 3 fold. Um, but let me just explain. So very often, let's go back to this here. If there was a shorter stack than the 33 big blind stack, then there's no way the small blind folds any hands, all right? Because suddenly the, uh, the big blind's risk premium is so much higher against the small blind, right? Because there's a shorter shorter stack at the table. Um, but yeah, there's only a few percent folding. 70 soft is, is one of those hands in there, um, but we're playing a huge, huge number of hands and I have lost, lost the sim. Where is it? The lost, there we go. Um, Let's just make sure you guys can still see this. Looks like it. Let's just make sure I can see the chat as well. Uh, cool. Okay. So yeah, low, just a huge amount of raising. So you can apply a ton of pressure. You should be VPing a lot of hands. The 70, so I mean, it's in there just because it's just, I mean, the player didn't actually, I don't think he folded, right? Um, because he recognizes he can just play a lot of hands. He can limp, he can raise, he can just do lots of lots of cool stuff. And you really shouldn't be folding many hands at all. So that's the key idea uh, in this uh, in this spot. All right, let's go. I think we've got one more. Uh, let's have a look there. Shadow says, why is eight two off a shove? And seven deuce not. These are the things I don't get about solvers. So eight deuce off is a raise. So the pinky color is a raise. Purple color is a jam. Green color is limp, and white is a fold. Uh, but as Bowie says, yeah, jamming any two cards is a huge punt. Don't do that. Artist says, would this change to a hundred percent raise if it was a PKO? Really good question. I don't know the answer. Um, okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, the next one. Uh, I think this is the last one we're going to look at because it's day two, guys, and we need to go and have food. Um, all right. So let me show up here. Barra had a first time chat says interactive link chart is a great idea, by the way. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, it seems to be going well. It's the first time I've done it on Twitch and YouTube like this. I do it inside of our programs, but um, this first time like this. Um, if you uh, are interested, I am in the middle of writing a new book. It's called The Final Table. If you're liking this final table analysis, then you're gonna love the new book. Uh, it's available on DMB's website. It's called The Final Table. It's coming soon. 
soon-ish. I mean, it's being released next summer, so um, you can pre-order it now, but you won't get it until like June next year. All right. Um, okay. Uh, let me send you send you the link for this one. Where are we at with this? All right, there's a link in the chat, guys, on both Twitch and YouTube, depending on where you are watching it. Wasn't this one on the Instagram? Yes, this was on Instagram. So if you uh, follow me on Instagram, instagram.com forward slash MTT Poker School, you will have seen this hand and me talk about it um, before. But if you weren't, then you won't know what's going on. Uh, but shout out to you, uh, Kent Touch This, for powers of observation. Um, what do you want to do with Jack-10 offsuit? So the key things here, if you haven't seen them already, is Mario Mosbuk. I think that's how you say it. I think the OE is like an O-umlaut, right? Um, has, what's that, eight big blinds? All right, so the two blinds cover the button. So this might affect what you want to do in this situation. Um, um, da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, let's let's pull up Menti. Look at this. Oh no, where's it gone? There we go. Right. So pretty even, pretty even so far. Um, Shadow says I think it's a fold because the blinds can apply a ton of pressure. Absolutely, they can absolutely apply apply a ton of pressure in this uh, in this spot. Let's just have a look here. Okay. Right. So pretty even though. Even even split. Slide it into Zumak. Okay. Let's take a look. And see. So first of all, let's just uh, let's just have a look at the risk premiums. You guys can see this, right? There's a weird line on the screen. Um, so button, uh, as you, yeah. So button's comfortably in third, and what happens then when he's playing against the the two blinds is his risk means his risk premium is really really high. So he's got to be very careful about opening. Into in this spot. Um, that's all I really want to say about that. Um, which means that the button is only opening 20% of hands. Now let's just go back to this spot. 20% on the button is uh, is very, very tight. But that's because he's in third in chips. His risk premium is really high against the against the blinds. Hopefully that like all makes sense. Um, really what we're looking to do is to understand why why his range is, it has to be so much tighter, okay? So you can see Jack-10 offsuit, um, it's mixing. I mean, raising seems to be losing a few dollars. Um, maybe we can just run the solve for longer. Um, but it's not it's not pure, pure raise. And I think a lot of players maybe struggle with the idea of folding folding this hand, uh, folding Queen-Jack off, King-10 off. Like imagine, imagine having an ace on the button and folding it. Like ace eight off, pure fold. Ace seven off, pure fold. All these hands are pure folds. Uh, some pairs are, are pure folding as well. So I know sometimes players will will often say things like, "You can never fold an ace on the button." How do you fold an ace on the button? That's so bad. Um, but actually, you can. You know, you can, there are there's situations when that is absolutely the right thing to do, and this is this is one of those where we're going to be folding a lot of ace x hands. Um, so yeah, if we did um, see if we can get this, there's no jamming, I don't think. If small blind three bets, um, the button just folds a lot of hands and plays uh, plays four bet only, which I think is pretty interesting because normally you get to see some three bets in, uh, sorry, some flats when you're in position and, and plays a lot of four bet, four bet or fold when you're out of position. Um, yeah, there's some here against uh, against the big blind. So you can see there are some flats, but again, a lot of jamming and um, a huge amount of folding as well. Mr. Jam, thanks for the follow. So yeah, Jack-10 off, not loving it. Um, looks like we ended up with uh, 12 versus 10. So shout out to you guys for playing along today. Um, if you haven't done so already, I've got a free Facebook group for tournament poker players. Um, if you go to uh, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash poker profits, 
then you can join my free Facebook group. We've got over 4,000 members learning about tournament poker. And uh, yeah, you should definitely, definitely join us. You're going to get more, more content just like this. Now, I'm hoping to do more of these every single Monday at four o'clock UK time. Uh, it will be a mixture of stuff. We might not do final table ICM stuff. We might do some bubble stuff. We might do some post flop stuff. We might do post flop ICM. We might do some DTO. We might, um, yeah, lots of different options uh, for us. Um, if you've got suggestions for what you'd like to see or you'd love to see in these, then join the Facebook group and drop a comment in, in the group saying that how much you love today's session and that you want to see more and this is what you'd like to uh, to see. If you're watching on Twitch and you haven't done so already, hit the follow button. If you are watching on YouTube and you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe button. Um, and I think that is going to be it. I am just going to wait for like three minutes, maybe two minutes, to see if there are any questions from you guys today. Um, any questions at all, if you want to ask me about the Facebook group, you want to ask me about training play out the pros, you want to ask me about the academy, you want to ask me um, how how I got those guitars on the wall, um, yeah, just let me know. Uh, type a comment in the chat. I'm going to stick around for a couple of minutes now, just do a Q&A. If it goes on, that's fine. We can, we, can, we can do that. I've probably got like eight minutes to do this, right? Eight minutes to do a Q&A. Obviously, if there aren't any questions, we'll just wrap things up there, but... Uh, if you've got any questions, guys, that is fine. Shadow says, does the solver ever have a limping strategy from the button in these kind of spots? So, I didn't allow for limping, but um, I'm sure that if we did, we would start to see some fun stuff um, for sure. But I think as soon as you start allowing limps, you are complicating the game tree. Yes, you might be able to sort of add a little bit of EV to your to your game, but you're then complicating it because you're adding limps as well. Um, okay, let's look at this. Patrick says, how do I win the Sunday million three mil guaranteed W coop? Um, play well and run even better. Uh, VCR says, what's the level in the academy? And to give some info about, right. So the academy is what happens once you graduate through my program called train and play like the pros, which is aimed at part-time players looking to, as it says, train and play like the pros. So if you're struggling with overwhelm, don't really know what to study, what to focus on, things like that, then we've got a whole program of um, for you that focuses on getting you to train and play like the pros. Once you've got through that, you then graduate to the academy, which is our monthly membership. Um, so if you would like some more info about that, join the Facebook group and send me a DM on Facebook if you're on there. If you're not, then send me a DM on Instagram instead. Uh, but Vicho says, study hard, grind hard, study again, repeat 10 years and maybe you've got a chance. Okay, Bo's got some uh, interesting feedback here. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. The variance of, of playing post-flop though with risk premiums waiting is pretty rough. For limping as a strategy, when race first in, we can win it pre. I don't know. Yep. I agree. Um, definitely some things to think about there as well. Um, certainly... On final tables, when you're covered, the out of position player can start having some limp, uh, sorry, some donks. You've got to play a lot more checkbacks in position um, because as soon as you bet, you open up to get raised. And then um, remember, we talked about risk premium being at its like most prevalent, um, important. If you if it, if there's a threat to your stack, as in, could you be all in by the river? All right. Or before then. Um, Marty says, good search. Thanks, boss. Good luck in WQ. Appreciate that. Is there anything else? Doesn't look like it. Um, so we're going to wrap things up, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. As I said, join the Facebook group. Drop a comment in. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you would love to see in the future. And I will be back next Monday for more of this. Until then, take care, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.